I would like to have a video played because our Lifetime Achievement Award recipient this year is going to be Jay Cutler. <laughs> Jay Cutler won the Arnold Classic three times and the Mr. Olympia competition four times. And he has continued throughout the years in years and years to promote the sport of bodybuilding. I'm a big, big fan of his. I'm a good friend of his. We love him. So let's see the video of Jay Cutler. Our next superstar literally shocked the world of bodybuilding last October. After two rounds, Shane Cutler. And remember, when it comes to competitive bodybuilding, the teenage stars of today are the superstars of tomorrow. And see what they hit. Our Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. The talk of the teenage show was the heavyweight winner, Jay Cutler, from Sterling, Massachusetts. Even you've ridden only one other contest before tonight? I won another show just to qualify for this. And, you know, it's a big stepping stone for me just to be here. Now let's check out the action of the Tournament of Champions that was highlighted by a dark horse from the Eve who rode in and foiled the party. A lot of anticipation for this man, Jay Cutler from Worcester, Massachusetts, his first time at the Nationals. And we know we're going to be seeing a lot more of Jay Cutler in the years to come. Two years, two years, I like to step on stage in about 2.30. And there he is, Jay Cutler, 254 pounds. One year ago, Jay Cutler was in eighth place. 1999, he found himself not even making the top 15 of this contest. And is now finding himself in the unusual predicament of having to knock out the champion. And the moment of truth, the second place finisher. Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler has to wonder what he has to do to upset the champion. How do you beat that? I had a battle of greatness to become greater. If I didn't have that mentality, it was impossible. So I skipped the Olympia in 2002, won my first Arnold. What does it feel like, first time winning the Arnold's Classic? Gosh, uh, this is only something I dreamed of. 2003, I won Arnold again. Jay Cutler is the Arnold Classic champion for the third year in a row. I was really on a roll. I had just won Arnold, and I was like the new up-and-coming future Mr. Olympia. I said, you know, I'll come back. He came back like a monster that year. It was the best Ronnie we ever seen. Holy cow. <laughs> Another surprise. And in second place. 2003, I placed second again. Jay Cutler, second place. 2004, second again. 2005, second again to Ronnie Coleman. And I said, this is it. I just went into toe six like guns blazing and just said, I'm going to just go pound for pound with this guy. The ultimate beat, Jay Cutler, ladies and gentlemen. And then number two, Sean. Sean, history will be made tonight. You can bring the Olympia gold medal to the 2006 Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler! Have that, like, oh man, that would be amazing. And then eventually, here I was, the you know, kid from Massachusetts, 6,000 people in my town, Sterling Mass, and. You know, no one in my family lift weights, and here I was, the best bodybuilder in the world, on the stage in Las Vegas. And then I lost. In the title of 2008, Mr. Olympia, Dexter Jackson! Holy shit, this guy just took his whole life and chased the best bodybuilder on the planet in the history of the sport. Jay spent six years trying to win that title and take it from Ronnie, and it only took him two years to give it back. The question was, what's next? What's my legacy? I'm trying to figure out your identity, right? Being the underdog again, like, worse than ever. Like, I had never been that much of an underdog when no one predicts me in the top five, right? Everyone's like, Jay's never going to come back. But underdog worked better for me. Always. Well, with a new hairstyle.
style and what looks to be a new physique. Jay Cutler takes the stage. Jay Cutler's gonna play up his strengths with her. Certainly, he knows his thighs are cut and shredded. Now there's a picture. Probably the most well-known photograph in all of bodybuilding, the foot stomp. Are those some quads? And look at those thighs, he's done it. Very large, Jay Cutler. Like no one in the history of this contest has ever lost the contest, has lost the title, and come back and reclaim the Sandow Trophy. And that's what Jay's trying to do. I'm going to ask you to break down the physique of Jay Keller tonight. Look at the fullness. He's just kind of nailed it straight around. I mean, he, it, wow. Certainly a surprise to most of the bodybuilding experts. The one paper did not have Jay Cutler in the top six. I wouldn't doubt that this is the best Jay Cutler who's ever stepped on stage. literally taken me 10 years to understand what that journey was after losing it coming back and winning it being the only guy in history and then being able to continue to do what i love and that's you know be involved in the arena i feel like i've achieved what i needed to i wanted to be something that no one else was and where i come from there's not too many uh national level bodybuilders and i just wanted to be something that no one else was Say, this is the lifetime achievement of what it actually looks a little different because normally it's a huge ball, it's a huge plate, a ball. And uh, I was told backstage that they broke it. So I don't know what that means, but I mean, in any case, so you will get that within the next month. So in the meantime, <laughs> we're going to present you with this here. But just remember, it's a lifetime achievement of what we think the world of you. I think the world of you. You have been. You have been the most extraordinary. Look at that. You have been an extraordinary competitor. A great Mr. Olympia, Arnold Classic winner. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Jay Cutler. Thank you, guys. So I know there's a worldwide audience and there's many special people that I owe this to, but I want to start first. And Arnold walked off. I had a little story for him. So it was July 3rd, 1991, and Terminator 2 launched in the movie theater. And I had been picking up bodybuilding books and, you know, as, you know, a teenager and looking at the physiques in there and, and like, wow, how do these guys get like that? And of course, I had known Arnold from uh, the Conan days and, you know, when Terminator 2 launched out and the original Terminator, you know, I'd watched that, you know, I saw that physique on there and I'll tell you I left that theater and one month later August 3rd 1991 I joined the gym my 18th birthday and that was when I actually made the commitment I want to fulfill a journey okay where I I've mentioned this before many kids want to be lawyers doctors professional athletes I wanted to be a bodybuilder so he was a major inspiration and a stepping point of that. Of course, I looked at Sylvester Stallone, John Claude Van Damme. You know, I grew up, like I, they mentioned, Sterling, Massachusetts, youngest of seven kids. No one in my family lift weights. My sister's here to witness this tonight, who basically raised me alongside of my parents. So, Kelly, thank you for being here. She likes to brag that she changed my diapers. And we had a family business doing concrete. Okay, my three brothers worked extremely hard. My dad, when he retired, worked in that business. And they taught me the commitment, the hard work. There was after school, school vacations, weekends, there was no clock. I had to work and I had to, uh, to earn everything that I did. And as a family business, that was what was ne necessary, right? So when I started attending college in the fall of 1991, I chased a degree in criminal justice. And of course, uh, I wanted to be a police officer. And, uh, 
get to California. That was actually my dream. My dream was to ride a motorcycle in California as a police officer. Can you believe that? I watched too many chip shows. So when I joined the gym, that Gold's Gym in Worcester, Massachusetts, there were a lot of people that, you know, just looked at me as a teenager. Within six months, I was one of the biggest kids in the gym. And sooner or later, I met someone who played an important role in my success, Chris Aceto. He lived in Maine, and he's not here tonight, but I really wanted to send a message to Chris Aceto, who wrote out a diet for me. It was six meals a day, and he came down, and he looked at me, and he said, oh, this kid looks okay. And I put it on my refrigerator, and I followed that diet to a T. And six months later, he came back and looked at me, and he said, holy shit, this kid's going to be Mr. Olympia. So I was, like, floored. Okay, my progress was quick. In 1993, I won the Teenage Nationals. I battled someone many of us recognize, Branch Warren, and that he beat me in the overall. I said, that's the last time that's going to happen. Which sooner or later, we were one and two at the Olympia, if you guys recall, 2009. I got a chance to go to California. I got to visit Gold's Gym, the Mecca bodybuilding. Anyone knows that's one of the greatest places where the bodybuilders, of course, Schwarzenegger themselves came from. Uh, I saw all those walls out there of all the former Olympia champs, and I said, I want to be on that wall. Ed Connors, big shout out to Ed Connors because he allowed me to stay with him and uh, gave me the opportunity like he gave so many other people. Okay, he also got me an introduction to Joe Weider. Now, Joe Weider, you know, bless Joe Weider because he mentored me. He made, it a, he made a promise to me. He said, you're going to be the best at what you do. And he mentored me on how to push myself and believe in myself and give me the opportunity. He gave me a contract with the magazines. And he was someone that really just, it was a huge signature person in my life. And, you know, I want to always recognize Joe Weider because without him, I, all of this wouldn't be possible including Arnold's reign. Uh, Jim Mannion. Jim Mannion runs this organization. Big shout out to Jim. I'm going to tell you a little story. I'm sorry, this is kind of dragging on, but I have a lot of history. You guys saw this highlight reel. So I was at a picnic, okay? This was 1994, and I was a kid with a great physique, and Jim had a friend that actually said, to me at this picnic, they said, I know Jim Mannion. I'll call him right now and tell him you're going to be the best bodybuilder someday. I said, okay, why don't you call him and see what he says? And Jim, of course, picks up the phone. And he says, okay, yeah, okay, whatever. Sooner or later, next year, I go to the Nationals. I win the pro card, and Jim Mannion knows, oh, you were the guy at the picnic. So it's a pretty funny story. Uh, Steve Weinberger, you're my guy, man. The best gym in the world, you gave me the opportunity. You don't remember, Steve, we were sitting in a Dunkin' Donuts. I guest posed for you. I remember everything. <laughs> Steve did buy me the coffee, too. And I guest posed for you. I just had a pro card, and you said to me, you can be great at this. And you believed in me from day one. We now are business partners promoting shows. You know, we spend a lot of time, obviously, communicating, and I just want to thank you for everything you've done for me. Without you, I wouldn't be uh, in this position. So, Steve Weinberg, I love you, bro. Now, where's Ronnie Coleman? He better be here. You saw... Yeah, well, that's not Ronnie Coleman. Where is he? Ronnie, you're the reason. You are the reason for my abilities, my greatness. I owe everything to you because you pushed me to do everything on the Olympia stage and beyond. And you are a huge, huge inspiration. You are my idol. I ended up beating you, my idol, but I love you. We spent a lot of great moments, Ronnie Coleman, the greatest bodybuilder of all time. And I love spending time with you. We guest pose every week. We ate together. We trained together. You kicked my ass in the gym. I, I'm going to admit that. But uh, you've given so much to bodybuilding, and uh, you are the greatest. 
Uh, I have to give a special shout out to also Chris Cormier. Chris Cormier, you're another reason because you stood next to me and you, you gave me motivation. You took the time to spend with me. You battled me on these stages for every one of my victories at the Arnold Classic. Uh, much love to you. Dexter, Phil Heath, Phil Heath, man, seven time Mr. Olympia, you, you were my best friend. We did it together for a couple of those Olympias. Uh, Branch Warren, of course, I mentioned. Victor Martinez, he pushed me in 2007. He thinks he won that show. We'll let him, uh, we'll let him keep thinking that, but the Sandow sits at my house. I know he's in the house, but I love you too, Victor. We can still do a pose down if you want. <laughs> to all the promoters, all the supporters, I hate to say fans because so many people that I considered, I guess in my head, fans became my friends. And they supported me and I traveled around the world. And as you guys know, I'm booked every week going place to place and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm touted as, you know, one of the elite. And I can't tell you how much that means to me to be able to still be an ambassador. I really thought, you know, at 50 years old, I would be, you know, someone that's kind of just passed on. And I'm still, you know, one of these figureheads that people look as in inspirational. And you never plan that when you start training. I mean, growing up where I grew up, it's just, it was so never expected. And, you know, for me to be motivational to so many people because of my abilities on that stage and selfishly becoming the greatest, that is the biggest accolade I could ever have beyond these awards, okay? And Angie, my beautiful fiance, you're my rock. Without you all, you hold it all together, all the business we do, the personal time, my craziness, I appreciate you. And lastly, manager Matt, you travel all these places with me, man, and uh, I wanna thank you for that. I know you hid this award from me up until about two weeks ago and you kept busting my chops. What are you gonna say in a speech? Well, I have to give you a shout out because I know it was planned. Brian Powers, the committee, thank you guys. And you know what, the fans all around the world that gave me this opportunity to stand up here and accept this award and give me the loudest applause for that quad stomp. And it's remembered, right? As one of the signature poses of bodybuilding, I sit at these expos, I do quad stomps all day, my leg's tired. I don't have to train legs anymore. And uh, once again, guys, there's, there's no ceiling to what we do. There is no limits. I wasn't supposed to be as great as I was. And I persevered through a lot of uh, dedication and commitment. You know, I beat the greatest bodybuilder of all time. I won three on all classics in a row. And uh, I appreciate all of you, the judges, all you people that, I know a lot of you judges judged me, uh, the sponsors, all the people that attend this event. I appreciate it so much. I know I spent countless hours this weekend just spending time with people and hearing your stories. And I hope that I can continue to motivate you guys all in all. And uh, I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you. Folks, please join me and get on your feet for one of the greatest of all time, your Arnold Classic Lifetime Achievement Award winner, the great, the cut above, Jay Cutler. Again, the No mercy for you, no worries for you. That Game of Thrones, go sexy on you.